It is our great pleasure to present the Robert F. Kennedy Ripple of Hope Award to Hans Vestberg. Hans, I'm so proud of you and so happy that your name is now connected forever with Bobby's. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for having me here with you tonight and for this tremendous honor, I'm so humbled. Before I begin, there are a few people I'd like to recognize. Our keynote speaker, Vice President Harris, my fellow honorees, and finally, two terrific individuals, Kerry Kennedy and Frank Baker. Thank you both, Kerry and Frank, for making all of this possible and being such role models for humanity. As you can probably tell from my accent, I didn't grow up in the United States. My introduction to U.S. history, Robert Kennedy, and the work done by the entire Kennedy family came from the classes in history and civics that I took at school. Growing up in Hudiksvall, a very small place in the northern part of Sweden that I'm guessing most of you have never even heard about. My childhood was underpinned with the Swedish values like equality for all, the importance of building consensus, sustainability as a societal imperative, and the power of diversity on any team. Like the Kennedys, I learned a great deal about life from my family, and in particular, my father. Through his coaching, I learned how to lead and respect all individuals. You see, I was never the star player, but my father helped me to understand the power of being part of a team and the role it could play in bringing out the best in people something Robert Kennedy did throughout his life. Over my career, I have had the great privilege of leading hundreds of thousands of people, first at Ericsson and now at Verizon, using some of the same core values I learned as a boy. As a business leader, those same values translate into the critical role of diversity in the workplace, the importance of equity in leadership teams and workforces. The need for businesses to address four stakeholders, shareholders, customers, employees, and society, and never over-indexing on one or the other. The need to focus your energy, sometimes leading from the front and other times from behind. And the responsibility of the businesses in driving society forward, something I believe needs to be at the strategic imperative for all businesses today. When I first learned that I was being given this honor tonight, I found out that Kennedy himself had a vision for the role of telecommunication would play in our future. In fact, Robert Kennedy himself once said, everywhere new technology and communications brings men and nations closer together, the concerns of one inevitably become the concerns of all. It's even clearer in the wake of the pandemic that technology isn't just nice to have, it's a necessity. It should not matter who you are, wherever you're born, or where you live. Having access to technology and communication services is increasingly a basic human right. In fact, digital inclusion is fundamental to the achievement of many, and perhaps all, of the UN's sustainable development goals, even if I never did get goal 18 added. This access to a shared digital future has been my life's work and something I continue to work to address every day. At Verizon, social impact is part of our strategy. That's why we are making a three billion US dollar investment in digital inclusion for the most vulnerable in our country, an effort that we will be deploying over five years. We also founded the Edison Alliance with the World Economic Forum with the goal of improving one billion lives globally through affordable and accessible digital solution across health, finance and education by 2025. In 2020, people used the cameras on their own phones to be a witness to the murder of George Floyd, as well as scenes from the extraordinary demonstration that followed. I felt both deep sense of responsibility to act and a deep sense of uncertainty about how best to do it. I reached out to about two dozen African-American executives, including Frank Baker. I asked them what someone in my position could do and I should do at a moment like this. And I listened and I learned a lot. And only then did we take action. From those conversations, it was clear that the bar was being raised much, much higher and that our good work was not good enough anymore. 
The bottom line is, leadership is as much about leading as it is about following. Only by following the insights of those leaders could I be the leader I needed to be for my company at that moment. Frank, I can't thank you and all of those other executives enough for that education. For your willingness to share difficult and important truth with me. The work of realizing the potential that Robert Kennedy saw for technology and communication is one of the most important projects of our time. Such inclusivity could bring the world closer together in extraordinary and unprecedented ways. And the concerns of one really can become the concerns of all. And I might also add the concern of leaders like me in the private sector, like never before in human history. It's our shared responsibility to take both responsibility and action. I think that is a future that Robert Kennedy might find thrilling and worth striving for. Thank you very much.